Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Somya on my channel Somya's Book Station. I talk a lot about books. I spread a lot of bookish love. If you are a book lover or if you want to become one, do hit that subscribe button. Also, do not forget to press the bell icon so that every time I post a video, you get notified. So today's video is a January wrap up video. I talk about the books that I read in January. I read four books in January, which is not a lot of books, but honestly, if I talk about the quality of these books, I am just going to say that I'm very, very satisfied with my reading in January because all these books were so amazing to read. So the fact that I did not read as much as I wanted to is not pinching me. Let me know in the comment section how many books did you read in the first month of 2019 and how is your bookish progress going so far but before moving on to the video i would like you to know that i have a blog called precisely somyas.com i leave the link for that in the description i post various blog posts on it so you can follow me there if you would like to check out what i'm writing and you can drop in feedback there as well so let's get into the video the first book is The Beauty and the Beast by Gabrielle Susan Barbo de Villeneuve. So this is a classic. So yes, my 2019's bookish year began with reading a classic and that's great. I already knew the story of The Beauty and the Beast for the most part, but I had never formally read it. And once I read it, I realized that I did not know each and everything in the story. There were quite a few details that I had no idea existed in the main story, which I found out after I read it. Also, the general reading experience that I got from this book was very enjoyable because this book is very beautifully illustrated. Also, it has quite a few interactive elements that are fun to play around with while you are reading like this. And there are quite a few others as well. You will know the relevance of these when you read the story. They are relevant to the story and pertinent to the storyline. So they are quite fun to interact with. Apart from that, I could not help but look at the cover of this particular edition time and again while I was reading it because it's so pretty. It's like a collector's edition. I loved reading this book and I loved how it was written because the language was very charming. And I guess the reason for that is that it's a classic. So it was a nice reading experience overall. The next book is Becoming by Michelle Obama. So this was my first non-fiction read of 2019. So I was really looking forward to reading this book and I had a lot of expectations from it and I was not disappointed at all. And in this book, she has talked about her life right from her childhood when she was Michelle Robinson to the time she became the first lady of the United States and the eight years she spent in the White House. So this is a very engaging read. It also gets motivational and sometimes it also gets moving from time to time. So when you read this book, you kind of get to know Michelle Obama on a human level and you don't just see her as somebody who held this fancy title of first lady, but as somebody who was once a girl next door like all of us. So it's a good experience reading this book. I also did a detailed review of this book on my channel and if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link for that in the description box. The next book is No Other World by Rahul Mehta. So this book had been sitting on my bookshelf since quite a few months. So I decided to finally read it in January. So this is a story about an Indian immigrant family living in the United States and it's taking place in 1980s and 1990s. For the most part, it takes place in the United States, but it also comes to India at some point in the story. So the story has been told in third person and has quite a few storylines going on simultaneously. Now different characters have different storylines in this book and all of them have some or the other struggles. For example, Kiran is a gay man in a homophobic society. So he is kind of always on his guard around people. Then there is Kiran's parents, Shanti and Nishit, who although have been living in America since quite a few years, they are still not completely at home there. So they have their own struggles. Then there are other characters from Kiran's extended family in India. At some point in the story, Kiran also visits India where he forms a bond with a teenage transgender named Pooja. I felt that the overall vibe of the story was very poignant because each and every character had some sorrow and sadness and struggle going on, but they were kind of still living their life. To me, the underlying message of the story kind of felt like that no matter what happens in life, no matter whatever challenges or whatever sadness you go through, life goes on, you go on living it. And that on the whole gave the story a very sad kind of a feel. But still, it was a good experience reading this book because it's a very well written book. It even felt lyrical to me from time to time. And I enjoyed that about this book. Also, even though the story had a poignant vibe to it, it was still a page turner in its own way. The next book is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. If you watched my Delhi World Book Fair haul video, then you know I got this from the book fair. If you haven't watched it, you can check it out. I'll leave the link in the description. So this is one book that a lot of my subscribers recommend 
recommended that I pick up so I did and I am so happy and sad at the same time for picking this book up happy because this is a great book sad because this book really made me cry a lot it's a very upsetting book so this story is taking place in the Nazi Germany and the central character of the story is a nine year old boy named Bruno so one day Bruno returns from school to find out that his maid is packing his stuff up and his mother tells him that they are going to move out of Berlin to this strange place that's called out with now Bruno is not very happy about it but they have to move because of his father's duty so when they move to this place Bruno does not have a lot to do so he decides to explore the place and he comes across this fence and on the other side of the fence he finds out that there is a boy who's wearing striped pajamas and this boy is of same age as Bruno and they even share the same birthday and they become friends but Bruno does not know why they cannot cross the fence and why they cannot really play together with each other the language in the story is very to the point it moves very fast and this book is definitely story driven as well as character driven so this story is devastating and haunting to say the least time and again in the story your heart breaks little by little and you are reminded of how much cruelty one human being is capable of showing to another on the basis of preposterous grounds this book is a must read according to me but i would say that be prepared to bawl your eyes out if you decide to go for this book because it makes you cry and how and everything in this book seems 10 times emotional because the story has been shown from the perspective of a nine-year-old child who does not have any prejudices and biases and who is completely innocent. So that's it. That was my January wrap-up. Let me know in the comment section which all books did you read in January and how was your reading month of January in general. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to connect with me on my social media, the links are in the description box. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, bye-bye.